PC prices have now launched on foottrading.co.uk. You guys asked for them, we have given them to you. Over 660 PC prices for special cards, gold cards, all that sort of stuff over on foottrading.co.uk. A tier one subscription which includes silvers, icons and special cards for Xbox and PS is £10 a month. And a tier two subscription is live filters. We have the buying and selling prices for nearly 1,300 special cards, 300 icons and every single profitable uh, silk for card filter on this game. For tier two, you also get access to the live filters feature, which is one of our most popular and my trade storage, which is a custom built storage platform for you guys to store the trades you've made and see your profit in real time. So check out foottrading.co.uk, but for now, let's get into the video. Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to a new video with me, Fastball 40 As always, if you're new around here, please do consider subscribing down below, clicking the like button, all that good stuff. It's massively appreciated. Um, if you want to watch me live, as always, click the link down below, come over to Twitch, get involved uh, over there. We had an amazing prize stream yesterday. It was absolutely brilliant. Lots of positive vibes. It was really, really good. But you may be wondering why we are sat on this screen right now. Um, this is like the third episode of doing it sort of weekly of Let's Talk FIFA and talk about what happened this week. And um, we have on the Road to Glory account and this is the state of the game right now. So we're gonna, I'm going gonna to be blunt, we're going to start by talking about the negatives and some thoughts that I have, especially my background um, in terms of this game, the state that it's in and where we're at with that. And then we'll talk about that because there are a lot of positives with the game at the moment, I'll give you that. But we'll talk about those afterwards. So let's start by talking about this. We, I've just played a game, I was losing this game, and I've just disconnected from the servers again, okay? Now, I've been talking a lot about the no-loss glitch. Now, obviously, clearly, that isn't the no-loss glitch, because I was losing that game. Full disclosure, I was 1-0 down, I'm not going to lie to people. And I've disconnected from the servers, so I've not been given a loss on that one. But that is my seventh disconnect of this weekend. Now, a lot, I know a lot of you say to me, oh, it must be your internet. It's not. Let's be blunt here, I have a dedicated line, and I've spoken to them, no problem with my internet. And we know it's not my internet because yesterday I live streamed my Champs games. And we had three of them on stream, live disconnects, two of which were definitely no loss glitches. One I think was just the servers. And I got disconnected and my stream was fine. Now if my internet was cutting out, my stream would cut out. So either it would either lag, it would either go black screen. Something would happen on my stream that would, would, would map mirror what my internet was doing. So the issue isn't my internet. The issue isn't the stream, for example. The issue lies in the connection to the game. Now, I do believe that sometimes it is just the servers. I will talk about that in a second. That doesn't make it good enough. It doesn't make it right. That's, that's problematic in itself. But there are still people no loss glitch in this game. And I'm going to be blunt. If you're still pathetic enough to no loss glitch on the 28th of June, sort your life out. Firstly, get good at the game. A lot of us have been grinding our asses off this year to get better at this game. Um, so you should do the same thing too. And it's June. Just play the game. Get your rewards. Cry about how bad the rewards are and get on with it. That's just my opinion, but I'm bored of seeing people cheat on this game. Get good at the game. If you're, if you're not good at it, get good at it. Um, but more over than anything, it did open up a question to me about the state this game is in. And we're, I'm talking here from a legal perspective. So let's park, for now, we're going to park the whole gambling FIFA points debate to the side. I think we all know where I stand on that. I think we know where most people stand on the whole gambling and loot boxes thing. Uh, we'll park that to the side for now. What we will talk about, though, is... How fit for purpose this game is. Is this game fit for purpose? And in the UK, when you sell a product, no matter what product it is, under the Sailor Goods Act, it must be fit for purpose. Okay? And computer games, I don't think that's ever been tested in law. From what I know, my background is law. I, I studied it and I practiced it and all that sort of stuff. Um, I studied regulation, that sort of thing. My background is law. And I don't think it's ever been tested in terms of a computer game and, and so on and so forth. But my question to you right now is, is FIFA fit for purpose? And I think the answer resoundingly is no. And let's break it down. FIFA is a football simulation game. And the main facet of this game is the ability to play the game and the gameplay itself. So going into a match, playing the gameplay and doing that. That is the major factor of this game. Outside of that, you have markets, you have SBCs and menu grinding, that sort of stuff. You have all that sort of stuff. But without that gameplay element... This essentially is, is like a stock market simulator because most people trade on it or grind menus and whatnot. It's a grind game. It's not a football simulator, which is what FIFA is described as when you're buying that game. It is a, a sports football simulator game. There are those ways of doing it, but that is mainly what it is. Now, if your servers do not work or cannot handle the, the traffic or whatever is going on, or there's a gigantic glitch on your game that allows people to glitch the game, mainly on Xbox then your game isn't fit for purpose. It's as simple as that. Because I pay, your, I pay you my money. I give AA my money and I say to them, here's whatever it costs for Rock Edition, 70 quid, 80 quid. Here's my money for this game. 
In return, you are giving me a fully functioning game out of the box, because that's what you're supposed to do in law. Fully functioning game, we go. Off we go. Now, obviously, that's very simplistic, because there are going to be times where the game's going to have problems. So, there are going to be times when servers go down. That's just technology. It happens. So, you allow for a little bit of that. Of course, you do. Every now and then, loads of people might rush into the game. The servers get overwhelmed. You might not be able to get on for a promo for 20 minutes, half an hour. I don't think it's okay that a billion-dollar company does that, but there is a degree of understanding there that that's the thing. However... This game has had this consistent issue now for three months of these disconnects. They've got worse and worse and worse. They've been here all year, but they've got worse in three months. And I've sat there going to myself, why have EA not acknowledged this? And I think they know. I think they know. If they acknowledge it publicly, it opens up legal issues for them. I legitimately believe this. Because if you acknowledge that your game is unplayable, because I've had seven disconnects now, and I've only, I've only got 16 games completed, okay? So a third of my games that I've played so far this weekend, I've been disconnected from. And it isn't just me. I see people going, I've not been affected by this. I don't care if you haven't been affected by it. Plenty of people have been affected by it. Left, right and centre. Um, I'm going to show you someone right now. This is a very good friend of mine. His name is L. Eds. He's an absolutely superb top 100 player with ambitions of turning pro soon. And he probably will turn pro and do very well. He's been a consistent top 100 player all year. Genuinely brilliant person. He had two disconnects in a row yesterday. Again, all these, it's happening to these people. This is a, a, a potential pro for this game, playing it. Now, EA sign pros up, and they go and play for EA, and they are, when you play for EA, they are providing you with the game and whatever it is, and you go and play for them, but you have to sign certain agreements, certain things. Again, if EA aren't providing them with the, the, the tools they need, in, 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 in essence, a game that works, they're in breach of contract. Because it is for EA to provide them with a game that works, so they can practice to... Then perform at events, and those events have certain rules attached to them and expectations of pro players in the way that they can, like, conduct themselves, the way that they act, in what they can and, can and can't say about the game, and etc, etc, etc. If EA aren't, aren't providing them that, they're in breach of contract. And I legitimately believe, legitimately believe, the reason why we haven't seen EA say anything about this game, um, on a sort of, we know we best up here, other than the fact they're now putting in more data centres, which are EA, EA term for servers, they're putting them in, more, more of them in, which should have been in five years ago. It's, but it's disgusting that they weren't put in before this. Um, I think EA knows it opens up, up to a, a very sticky situation legally. For one of two reasons. Like I've said, for the first reason, in that the game isn't fit for purpose, it doesn't work, it doesn't do what it said in the tin. If you remember No Man's Sky, when No Man's Sky came out, a lot of people still enjoyed that game. When it came out, they were challenging court because they said on, on, on the game, there would be, I think it was hundreds of thousands of different planets, all completely different, and actually... Certain trees were different. or were, I, I don't know the exact details of it, but certain parts of it were like different, but the, the, the planets were relatively the same. Or you could meet your friends in space, but you couldn't because they were nowhere near you and it was impossible to meet up with people. No Man's Sky were made to pay in court for that. That happened. These are facts. And I look at it now and I go, this is in very similar territory. We're going to give you guys a football simulation game that works and does this or whatever, but it doesn't work. The game doesn't work. There's no way of getting around that now. This game does not work. So if you do that, well, actually, you can't market yourself as a football simulator game. It's a football simula simulator game when it works, but really it is stock market simulator. That's what this game is. Um, and where, where, do you lay, where do you lay the blame here for this sort of situation? Where do you lay the blame? And in my opinion, you lay the blame down at number one, Frostbite. I mean, most of you, no one wants Frostbite. No one wanted Frostbite. No one wants it now. Frostbite is the worst thing that happened to FIFA, and yet EA insists on persisting with it. The Frostbite engine on this game is diabolically bad. The moment you saw it all over Twitter, the moment anyone was talking about the fact that Frostbite might be going, you might be getting Unreal Engine or something like that, we were celebrating. But no, we're left with Frostbite again because EA persists with a thing that doesn't work. No one likes it because EA don't care about consumers. EA think they're above the law. They think they're above their consumers. I only need to look at Corey in the way that he interacts with people in his disgusting manner. Let's be honest. I don't, I don't hate him or hate Zaro or hate Jamie Foot Economist. I don't hate these people, I just don't like the way that they interact with people and the way they think they're above the whole community. Corey is, in my opinion, the way that he has dealt with the community at any point has been nothing short of a disgrace. He has, he has no right to speak to people the way he does. If he doesn't like what you say, he just blocks you. He's blocked me and I've never ever spoken to him before in my life. That's just Corey for you, because he's not a very... And I'm going to be blocked with you, he just doesn't come across as a very good community manager. That's it. Zaro I have respect for and I think Zaro genuinely cares. He puts up with, with crap a lot of time. I genuinely care about him. Jamie Foot Economist... I don't know what happened to him. You were the chosen one, bro, and it's all gone wrong. But beyond them, these people that develop in this game, these are some of the best gameplay, supposedly the best gameplay developers in the world. These people are supposed to be at the top of their game. And this is shambolic. This is shambolic. This whole game, everything you see on the screen right now in front of you, it is shambolic. And it's not good enough. 
But let's talk about some of the positives, okay? But the problem you have when you talk about these positives at the moment is... Whether you like it or you don't, you can fill this game up with all the great content you want. But if the gameplay is crap, it's pointless. What is the point of giving us a brilliant SBC in Malang Saab? This card is brilliant. 92 rated, it's great pace, great passing, brilliant dribbling. Like, the composure tracks are sensational. Defending fantastic, physical is fantastic. For an 83 and an 84 rated squad, this is sensational content. But what is the point? And this is what I ask right now, what is the point? Because I can go and do this Malang Saar and I want to do him on the road to glory. But what's the point of me doing him if I'm just going to get disconnected continuing from this game? I, I, I pointed you to Ed's a minute ago. He's just gone and sold his whole team. Because he's like, what is the point? Why have I got all these coins wrapped up in this game when the gameplay don't play? Christian Eriksen, four, a 5 star, 5 star, 85, 86. Not the best value, but not terrible either. Uh, Roberto Firmino. All the upgrades, all fantastic. And uh, as, as always, this Prime Icon isn't bad. Party bag's not bad. Content, as far as I can see. Content absolutely everywhere. But what is the point? Because this is the positive right now. We're finally getting decent content. It shouldn't have waited until the end of June for this to happen. Again, it's all about squeezing all the money they could out of us this year. Promo, promo, promo. Pack, promo, pack, promo, pack, promo. Admittedly, the letdown that was fun. This is Ibrahimovic. A 95 rated card for nothing too terrible to, to go and grind towards. Kubo, brilliant. Again, 94 rated card to grind towards. Again, I go back to it. Why bother? If you're not going to sort the game out, um, the, the main important factor of this game being the gameplay, why bother? But I'll tell you why they bother, and I'll tell you why we've got this great content right now. Because they're fully aware the game is shambolic. They're fully aware the game is unplayable. So EA have always done this. Here's a distraction technique for you. When things are really wrong and bad, here's a distraction technique for you. We'll release some content that we know you want. Here you go. Forget about the gameplay. Talk about us in a positive light and don't mention the fact that we are absolutely terrible at our jobs. Basically is what this is. And that's essentially what it comes down to. Now, I don't wish anyone at EA ill, or I don't, I'm not going to sit here and do what certain content creators will do and be like, hey, they're terrible people, or like, get the pitchforks out. That's not my mentality at all. But I do think we deserve an explanation why the game is as bad as it is. And not this blatant ignorance and arrogance to think you can just ignore what everyone's saying. Because it's unravelling for them. It is unravelling. I'm talking to other content creators, medium-sized guys like myself, in terms of like our Twitch followings and whatnot, who are saying, I'm not doing FIFA anymore. I'm not bothering. Why am I bothering with FIFA when I get nothing back from EA in return? I don't get anything other than the game itself, which doesn't work. I don't get enjoyment out of playing it. And you are seeing the big boys, the really big boys, not playing it. Now, caveat that with the fact that other big boys and the big boys like Castro, Pyreface, will play different games at this time of the year. They always will do. But there is content galore on this game right now and people just aren't playing it. People are burnt out from this year for the simplistic fact that we got bombarded with promo after promo after promo because EA wanted to squeeze as much money as they could. People are fed up with the gameplay on this game. They're fed up with being scammed out on this game. They're fed up with being scammed by rewards. They are fed up inherently of not being listened to by EA and being blanked when we make constructive criticism and say to them, this is not good enough, we deserve better. They're fed up with us being deemed, despite the fact that we underpin the whole of EA's operation, Ultimate Team pays for most of the games that EA have to be funded. £1.6 billion, pounds, okay? It funds their games. But what do we get when EA Play comes out? A 30-second um, advert of Mbappe taking a penalty mixed with Madden, while Star Wars, which makes them nowhere near as much, is nowhere near as important to them realistically, or shouldn't be as important to them in terms of money, gets a 15-minute cinematic experience. We are bored of being shafted, and I'm, here, I'm seeing it, I'm speaking to more and more content creators who are saying the same thing. We are bored of being shafted. So where do we go? I think realistically, no one's ever going to challenge EA in a court of law. I think it's very unlikely that's going to happen, except on a relatively clean cut point, I think, in terms of the gambling. In terms of loot boxes, I think they will be challenged either by governments or in a court of law to say, are these gambling? Are they causing gambling addiction? I think that's relatively clean cut to prove because it's clear they are. There's no way they are getting around that. Clearly they are gambling. You are telling people spend real money in the hopes of, of hitting the jackpot in terms of packing something really good. It's clearly gambling. It's immoral. It's EA. But do I think anyone's ever going to be able to get them in a court, in a court of point of law in terms of uh, fit for purpose? Probably not. And I also don't think the best idea for a test case on this would be against EA. I think a smaller, more indie game may be the place you would start with that. But I do think there is an, a legal element here that this game doesn't work. It doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And for a year now, we've been scammed out of EA, promise and change, and it's never come. Or point blank refusing to admit that there's been a problem with their game since the moment it came out. But I do think that there is, there is 100% a legal question here, a legal argument here. 
And I think someone with the money and the financial backing could do a yay that could be successful in it, in my opinion. I don't think anyone's going to do it. I certainly, if I had the money, wouldn't bother because how are you going to, how are you going to, so a conglomerate that's just bury it and, and, and delay and delay and delay and delay. Um, but I, I definitely think it's that. We've got a flashback SBC coming tonight. Anything more than 81, 82 rated, you've got problems with that because you've got players like Theo Walcott in there who just aren't usable right now. In my opinion, EA will go for 83 or 84 on that. Um, but yeah, I know, I know it sounds disappointing. The reason why I'm so disappointed about this is I have been running the Road to Glory series on YouTube. I've been joining Grinder back again. But I have a decision to make now as to whether or not I bother with Foot Champs. If I don't bother with Foot Champs, the Road to Glory dies. That's as simple as it gets. This Road to Glory dies. Because Foot Champs is needed for me to be able to grind it out. But I'm not going to put myself through in June, July, the ball crap with these servers for the sake of trying to get some rewards and start a Road to Glory. I'll just go back to trading on my own old account again and paying on my old account because I've got all the stuff on that. I don't want the Road to Glory to die, but I do have some thinking to do because I'm not going to sit here and grind out a game in terms of like really pushing it hard and trying to do stuff if we're going to get this from EA. But yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. It's quite a negative one this week, but I think I'm sick, to start, sick and tired of acting like everything's fine because I'm a content creator for this game when actually it's crap. It is an absolutely crap game. Um, but yeah, if you are new around here, please do consider subscribing down below and clicking the like button. It's massively appreciated. But for now, lads, I am out. Peace out. I'll speak to you soon.